I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my life living in Nicaragua. Today we're going to be answering a high priority question from Beyond Bounds Life about bringing several families and a teacher down for a an extended stay here in Central America. And they're wondering where they should be looking and what decisions they should be making right away to be able to get their plans done and get underway. We love hearing about people coming to visit us here in Nicaragua. So we're going to be looking into their question and answering that right away. This is one that came in this morning and we're going to have it out today for them right after the phone. It is a beautiful morning here in Leon, Nicaragua, and I've got to say the light is fantastic. I actually redid the video because I started and I didn't like the light. And I'm like, you know what? The videos really do much better and they're a lot more pleasant to watch when I take a little bit more effort on the light. I just need to, sometimes I'm like, the background looks great and I'm like super dark. And I'm like, you know, honestly, watching this is a little bit tough that so we fixed anyway. All right, we're gonna get right into the question. This is again from Beyond Bounds Life. They sent this in this morning. I actually had another video made for today, but love getting questions. We're gonna get right to it. Hey, Scott, I'm organizing a community of six families who are traveling with a teacher in Central and South America next school year. Now, presumably coming from Lake North America. So if you don't know, I assume that they're coming around uh, September or later. That's generally where the next school year is for most people, uh, not here in Nicaragua. So if you're in Nicaragua, you'd be confused. I'm trying to pick our best base in Nicaragua. This is awesome. They've already selected Nicaragua. I don't have to sell them on the beauties of this particular country. Uh, we would be staying for seven weeks. That's fantastic. Nearly two months here. That's that, well, a month and a half. That's really good. Uh, our top priorities are safety, access to Wi-Fi groceries and local restaurants, a good local culture for our school to tap into with cooking classes, soccer games on the beach, etc., and easy access to outdoors for afternoon surfing, beginner to intermediate waves, and hopefully easy access to the jungle and volcanoes, etc. We will have cars. We would need seven apartments or houses for under $1,500 a month, but they all have to be somewhat close to each other. Any suggestions you have would be welcome. We are also considering seven weeks in either Guatemala, Lake Atitlan, or Boquete, Panama, if you're able to weigh in on either of those. Uh, the only thing is we have to make a quick decision. Thanks for your insightful videos. Okay, so, so I have been, I'm just going to start with the, I always write from the bottom up. Uh, Lago de Atitlan, I've spent some time there, and it's absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. If you're going to be a tourist in Guatemala, of course, you have to go to Atitlan uh, and Antigua. Neither are places that I would choose for relocation. Personally, I find them very uh, uh touristy uh, pretty much and there's just i mean just loads and loads of foreigners living in those locations and their prices are rather high but as a tour group they could be really good locations um of course uh antigua much like the city of leon at much higher price but much cooler temperatures <laughs> but also much farther from the ocean uh, uh lago de atedlan is an amazing lake it is however very cold very deep uh and the communities around it are are quite separated which makes it an amazing location it's a lot like going to an inversion of ometepe here in nicaragua if you're looking for a kind of physically isolated but really popular tourist destination it's an interesting mix of things and you're not going to find anything else like it anywhere. I don't know about wanting to spend, I mean, spending seven weeks anywhere in Latin America is pretty easy. It's a, there's just always stuff to do, right? Life is lively here. People are nice. So, I mean, I could easily spend seven weeks in Atitlan, but would I choose to do that? Um, the, the biggest problem with Atitlan is that you're going to find that you're uh, struggling to interface with uh, locals and you'll just be bombarded with foreigners who make up the majority of the population around most of the lake, especially in the areas you're likely to be. Uh, and the cost of everything is very, very high. Beyond that, though, the access to resources is quite good because it's a major tourist hub in a very large country. And so, yeah, you, have, you just have everything there. So, And I do have some videos from Atitlan almost exactly two years ago. Uh, so certainly go check those out and you can see what it's like. We had a really good time there. I'm very glad I went. I will certainly go back. Um, I like it as a tourist destination, but if I was to be buying a home in Guatemala, it would not make my short list, let's just put it that way. Neither would Antigua. But if you're going to visit uh, Guatemala, you probably want to visit Antigua as well. They're not super close to each other. Antigua is closer to Guatemala City. Anyway, that is my take on Lago de Atitlan. Great place to visit, but but may not be great for what you're looking for. I don't have all the details as to what you're looking for. Now, Boqueta, so I've lived in Panama. Guatemala I visited more recently. Panama I used to live in briefly. Uh, 
about almost 10 years ago and and I have a soft spot in my heart for Panama it's what introduced me to living in Latin America it's what encouraged me uh, to start really investigating it as a home base and as you know I now live here so Panama is very important for me in that respect like it really did play an important role however I never went to Boqueta uh, that was a uh, it's very touristy area again it's very popular with expats so it wasn't really on our radar it is supposed to be amazing it's probably better for a long-term stay than Atitlan, because Atitlan is specifically a tourist destination, whereas Boqueta is just really popular with expats. Those are not quite the same thing. A lot of people do visit it, of course, but you're going to be a bit disconnected from local culture, I think. Probably not not like Atitlan, but a little bit. You're just going to have a, a really big uh, access to, to a lot of expats, and, and when you're in popular expat communities, you get a, a very different uh, cultural interaction in most cases. Now, Panama in general, absolutely fantastic, such a great country, um, but its culture is so wildly different than Nicaragua or Guatemala, which are much more similar to each other than they are to Panama. Now, also be clear, Panama is technically not Central America culturally. Physically, most of Panama is considered to be part of the physical Central American Isthmus. Not all of it, only most of it. But from a cultural perspective, generally the majority of Panama is considered to be South American. There are bits that are definitely Central American because they're bordering Costa Rica and it's kind of a bleed over zone. Um, and, you know, it's really just where Panama managed to kind of conquer and put their national border. So there's areas that are still Central American, and there's a lot of Central American influence. But you're going to find, if you spend time in Central America and then go to Panama, you're going to be like, oh, this just, people are just different here. That's, you're, you're really hitting a South American thing. Not that South America is a single cultural zone, but South America and North America do, even within Latin America, do have a very clear divide between Costa Rica and Panama. You'll find that all of the, and basically it comes down to everything from that border northwest was all originally part of Mexico for a very long time. And before that, it was all part of one Spanish colony. Everything from roughly the, Span the Panama Canal, a little bit west of there, and east and south, was part of eight, except for Brazil, of course, was part of a different Spanish colony traditionally and was never part of Mexico. And so they, they really have big historic differences over um, the entirety of the colonial period. And of course, Nicaragua and Costa Rica represent the border zone between traditional empires in the region. So even before the, the Spanish conquest in the late 1400s, the northern portion and the southern portion have different thousands of years of, of imperial history uh, that's quite different in linguistic differences and such. So uh, they really are two different areas. Okay, we dug probably more into that than we really need to. But yes, Panama is, is, is a great option. Guatemala is a great option, but I don't know about those specific locations being so hot. So here in Nicaragua, um, and, and this is gonna, it's amazing how often this is what we say, but there's a really good reason for this. The city that you're looking for here is almost certainly Leon. And the reasons that you're going to want to look at Leon is the same reasons that we live here for the most part. So one is that it is, even within the Nicaraguan context, one of the cheapest locations. We're just a low cost city. We have a lot of open space around the city and we're not a logistics hub like Chinandega, which also has a lot of space around it. And that means that we just keep our costs really low. We're also not a major tourist hub, but we do have enough tourism that there's some infrastructure for that, but it's minor. Uh, so it's a nice blend of, are there tourists? Yes, people come here. Are there expats? Yes, people live here. But it's a large city with a small number of those things. So you really have essentially unlimited opportunity to uh, be isolated from that and get into a Nicaraguan cultural experience without any problem. You won't be you know, accidentally bombarded by expats and tourists, except for at the beach, of course, that's always going to be the case. Uh, but if you do want to seek some people out, you want to, you know, just sit down with some foreigners like me and say, hey, you know, let's, let's have coffee and talk about what life is like for you living here as an expat is here full time or whatever. That would be easy to find those people, but you're not going to be surrounded by them every time you go somewhere and feel like you're always part of that, that crowd. All right, so let's look at your priorities because this is really why... Uh, uh, we are looking at Leon. So number one, 
safety. So this is great. We just had on yesterday's video and a number of times recently, we talked about safety in Nicaragua and specifically safety here in Leon. And that's where Leon really shines. Now, Nicaragua is a crazy safe country in general. I understand El Salvador is beating us right now. Canada supposedly is beating us. We're hearing a lot of stories that it's not. Um, we're beating the U.S. though. So the U.S. is generally a pretty safe country. I know it gets a lot of flack. It has its problems. But we're in that ballpark. We're a little bit safer, but in the U.S. ballpark. Uh, but Leon, within Nicaragua, really stands out as an extremely safe city within Nicaragua. So even Nicaraguans are like, well, yeah, it's safe. But now Leon, that's safe. So a lot of people pick Leon simply because the, the degree of violent crime here is so extremely low uh, that it, 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 it's noticeable. Right. We, we really like that. Uh, access to Wi-Fi groceries and local restaurants. Now, local restaurants anywhere in the country is always a struggle. The only places that have a lot of food options. Now, you're only here for seven weeks, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But San Juan del Sur and Managua and Granada, those three locations, Managua because it's giant, Granada and San Juan del Sur because they're tourist centers, have loads of restaurants with a lot of varied cuisine. And so we are very jealous of them. And it, that's just a fact. Like, period, they have the restaurants. There's some other great restaurants all over the country, but they're isolated. They're sprinkled around. Like Huigalpa has an amazing, I've not been there. Huigalpa is a famously amazing steakhouse, La Hacienda. It's supposed to be just absolutely fantastic. Everything I see about it looks like I just, I want to go. I want to go just to go check out this place. And yes, they have things other than steak and um, a beautiful venue, right? But it's not in a group of restaurants. It's all by itself out in this area. It's not even in town. Um, and people have to like sojourn there to go eat, right? So that's that's a thing. Here in Leon, you're going to have, should be enough restaurants to get you through seven weeks. You have unlimited amounts of local cuisine. That's not a problem. Street food, fantastic. Street carts, even of varied things like You've got loads of barbecue on the street, loads of uh, frittanga, which is the fried, like very traditional homemade food that's everywhere. You're gonna have um, Mexican food carts from, from here and there. We have one in Sutiava, you got one in Guadalupe. Uh, there's, a, there's a few sprinkled around. You've got that, the hamburger stands, which is the Leon thing to do. Eat late night hamburgers, they're huge, bigger than your head, um, all over the city. You got hot dog stands. Even in the barrio, you can be walking on a back street. For those who remember when I was doing my show in Labo Rio, I would go the street behind my house and be in the middle of nowhere and just like in the barrio on the street. And there's a hot dog place that made perfectly good hot dogs and french fries in the middle of the night. So you could stop by at 11 o'clock at night on a back street. You'd be like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Wait, oh, there's five people getting hot dogs. This is so cool. All right, that stuff's all over the place. So I don't think you'll have any problem finding enough food as long as you're only here for seven weeks. And it, you, presumably you're gonna, you mentioned groceries, right? You're gonna cook some yourself, no problem there. We have plenty of grocery stores here in Leon. We have La Colonia, we have La Union. Those are the two big fancy ones and multiple of La Colonia's. Uh, we have Maxi Pali, a couple of those. We have plenty of Pali's uh, and then we have many traditional markets. And, and so those are just all over the place. And if you're here for seven weeks, you may make a run into Managua one time just to see what's there. That would be reasonable. And then there's, there's a lot more grocery options there as well. So from a grocery perspective, you're great. If you're cooking once in a while, then you really get a lot of variety. And, uh, and we do have a number of restaurants, right? We have Sua, we have Barbaro, we have Geckos, we have uh, Carnivoro. Uh, you know, it, it, the, there is a number of restaurants. When you live here full time, they start to wear down and be like, okay, there's not that much variety. But if you're coming to do a survey, you're gonna, yeah, you're probably gonna go to each of the ones you like two times at least while you're here, but that's probably not a big deal. Um, it all depends on what you're looking for for variety. So I think the restaurants will be sufficient for the amount of time you have, but I am cautioning you that the there are limitations. You're not gonna be like, there's so many restaurants to choose from, I really am so sad I only get to pick however many. No, you're gonna be like, okay, here's the list. I think I got everything that's really interesting. You'll probably miss one or two that are just hard to find. La Antigua and La Borrillo really, if you don't know, you don't know. But if you do know, it's a place to go. And uh, uh, and you'll be more like, okay, 
we're gonna go to all of them and then half of them we're gonna go back two or three times and that's it's just gonna be it is what it is right that's that's probably and at some point you're gonna be like hey can we take a trip uh, we have cars let's go to Chinandega and hit the food scene up there because it's very different um, I really recommend like right as you come into Chinandega on the right go just a little bit up and there is uh, a, a big like food area with dragonfly go hit that at least one day that region two even two or three times on your trip there's multiple restaurants there probably worth it to get some serious variety and see a little bit more of the country but because it's an easy drive right at some point you're like you know what 45 minutes for really excellent food uh that's completely different could easily be worth it when you're here for seven weeks um so wi-fi so that's going to be dependent on your apartment from a city perspective any city you're reasonably looking at has amazing internet that is not a problem where people run into problems is the specific apartments that they end up renting don't have good wi-fi and and it's just because they're not paying for it if they have a place that's not occupied very often or they've never sold it before or they don't use internet and they don't know or the people they've been renting to don't tend to use very much internet they'll probably have okay internet like it'll let you check your email and you know download some stuff watch some netflix it's probably never going to be a problem with that i do know some places like grand pacifica report that even that's a problem that's because it's a big private area and they don't let the municipal services in that everyone else has so they have to actually go through a bunch of effort to keep them out but anywhere that's a public space you're gonna have access to at a minimum claro antigo and then good apartments very very rare are gonna pay for teco but that's a big expense right if you're looking at a cheap apartment, Claro is going to be like, ah, 35 bucks a month. Teco is going to be like, ah, we don't do anything for under like 90, right? But it's amazing. So high-end apartments for digital nomads are going to need Teco and not a lot of options for that. So that, that can be out there. So, so the internet, you're going to need to investigate a little bit on a case-by-case -case basis, but that is true anywhere. Some places like San Juan del Sur and Granada actually have some of the worst Again, the cities are fine. It's individual apartment renters. There's so many people that just swarm in, try to put cheap uh, apartments on the market, and cheaping out on internet is a really easy place to just go really cheap, put in no effort, and it's too late because there's no way for people to verify it ahead of time. That's that's a reality, right? So, so getting and writing that you're gonna get a certain speed or a certain service or whatever is probably needed. That can be done pretty easily, but just be aware, especially in tourist areas, it gets worse and worse. Often you can go to a place that's like, okay, we have Claro, the connection's fine, because they're the big, like they're almost always who you're gonna get and, and they're good. And you get in there and they're gonna be like, yeah, we pay for the cheapest possible thing. You can be like, hey, I'm gonna take this place for two months, but during that two months, you're gonna upgrade it to this, I'll pay the $10, the $20 difference during that time. And they're like, oh, sure, you're going to rent for me for that? I'll totally turn it up. And then they'll turn it back down when they're done. I know people who've done that, not a problem. So just be aware, you may have to do that. Also, check what your real internet needs are before you come down and really think about it because Americans especially have a tendency to think they need wild numbers that they don't at all because they're used to US. And the same thing happens other places. This is not unique to the US. Consumers are sold internet based on completely false numbers and, and fake things, and they it, you typically don't have a very good idea. And, and all the ISPs lie to you. Every time you have a problem, they'll try to sell you more service when the problem is obviously something else. Um, and so it's just something you need to be aware of. All right, moving on in our list of items that they need, a good local culture for our school to tap into, such as cooking classes, soccer games on the beach, and etc. Okay, so... This is Nicaragua. You're not going to find a ton of soccer. It does get played, but it's not anything like you're imagining. In most of Latin America, here it's going to be a lot more things like baseball and volleyball, but certainly sports and things like that. I know these are just examples. Now, cooking classes, I don't know anywhere in Nicaragua. I'm pretty confident that San Juan del Sur and Granada have something, but formal cooking classes are not a normal thing. This is not like Italy or say Argentina, where I would expect those to be like just on offer and you could just schedule, but finding someone locally that would be absolutely willing to teach local cuisine and cooking or uh, either in their home or like at a restaurant, I can't imagine it would be difficult at all. Um, I know as a restaurant owner, like it, probably not hard to find, especially ones that are not open all the time, to be like, hey, can we pay a little bit and, and have the, the cook come in like two hours early and show how they prepare a couple local dishes and talk about that and maybe have a translator because very few cooks are going to speak English. That's probably really easy to do. It'll just be on the informal side uh, or whatever. Now, uh, and they, this, this 
combines with the soccer games on the beach uh, and saying easy access to the outdoors for afternoon surfing beginning to intermediate waves and then a few other things we're going to get to okay so surfing of possible places that you're going to go for surfing so the entire nicaraguan coast on the pacific is full of surfing opportunities there's very few spots where you can't surf uh in nicaragua one of them the primary one is San Juan del Sur because it is a bay. It's a protected bay. Now, of course, once you get out of San Juan del Sur, there's surfing right there. But in San Juan del Sur, a lot of people think they're going to get like, oh, that's the surf center, right? No, it's the it's the one non-surf place. That's one of the reasons it's such a popular tourist destination. Tourists typically don't want surf waves. They want bays where they can just wander into the water and be super serene and beautiful and quiet. That's what people like most of the time. Surfers don't like that. So Nicaragua leans much more towards what surf surfers like than normal tourists with the exception of San Juan del Sur. So in this particular case, that may not be the best of choices, but you have an awful lot throughout Nicaragua. However, that being said, the point here that's really important, and again, the reason that we're mentioning Leon is the city you should be in or the region you should be in, is that Leon is the only city with nearby beaches. All the other beaches you'd be looking at being stuck living, stuck, living in a beach community instead of being in a city with all the normal Nicaraguan culture and then going to the beach in the afternoon. Leon is the only city in the country where its main beaches are actually part of the metro area. They are outside the city. It's about 20 minutes from the city center, about 12 minutes from the city limits out to the beaches. But that's really not bad, especially if you have your own, own car. But if you have students and they're comfortable taking the city bus, the city bus, which is a chicken bus in this particular case, there's from anywhere in the city, you can take a municipal bus, like exactly like we showed on the show yesterday, right? We showed it yesterday. And then about a week ago, we showed the city buses. They're clean, very safe, bright, very easy once you know the route and of course wherever you're renting they'll tell you the routes they'll know right how to get to Marcadito in Sutiava take a bus from anywhere in the city or if you're staying in the Sutiava area maybe you can walk to Marcadito for example if you were to stay in San Mateo which is a neighborhood of Sutiava that's really close to the bus station just south of the uh, Colegio Calesans that region would be fantastic if somehow you were able to find enough places there and then you could walk to the Marcadito where you can pick up the bus for like 25 cents and go to the beach then you wouldn't need to use the cars and you could go to the beach anytime you wanted this is the only city that's like that everywhere else you're going to have some limitation. Chinandega has access to the beach, but it's not a surf beach. It's the port. So you'd be going to see the cargo ships being unloaded, which is interesting, but it's farther away. It's more like 30 to 40 minutes, and it's not really a beach like you would hang out at. There's a little bit. It's a nice town. I've done some videos on it. Like it's, it's a cool little place. That's Corinto, but it's not what you're looking for. Nowhere else even comes close. Managua to its beaches is over an hour, sometimes two, uh, even Rivas. So the thing about Nicaragua, and we, we touch on this a bit, but we don't really dig into it too often. The culture of Nicaragua, if you're coming down to learn about Central America and Nicaraguan culture, you don't really want to be on the beach because Central American culture doesn't take place on the beach, not in traditional Central American culture. The place where that does take place is on the Caribbean coast, on the Mosquito Coast. Those are the Creole areas where it's a completely different culture, a completely different history. And yes, that's part of Central America, but it's Caribbean Central America. And they, they uh, identify as part of the Caribbean zone rather than the Central American zone or what you think of as the Central American zone. Of course, there's there's the cultural Central America, which is kind of what we're thinking of culturally Nicaragua. And then there is the Central American zones that are part of the Caribbean, like Belize and the Mosquito Coast. Of course, they are also part of Central America. In no way saying that they're not. I have heard that claim. That is not true. They are absolutely part of Central America. Um, but the culture that you're thinking of, the, the ability to get into that, like that's going to be, if it's Mosquito, Atlantic Coast. If it's Nicaraguan traditional, Central American traditional, it's going to be inland. And so if you go to the Pacific coast, what you're getting is either affluent Nicaraguans who have invested in the beach as a more recent thing. That is a new cultural thing that's only been happening for a couple generations. Uh, so it's, it's, it's still relatively rare. A lot of Nicaraguans go to the beach for vacations and stuff, but it is a new thing and it is still only a portion of the population and it's still very much a we live here and once a year twice a year we head out to the beach because it's something different and interesting and it's very cheap it's an easy way to go out and do something very different so it's popular for that uh mostly what you get at the beach is either very affluent nicaraguans who are able to afford party houses on the beach or are retired and are able to live out there and they just really like it you get that or a lot of expats now some places have a good mix and you really aren't like completely swarmed by expats that's fantastic and 
again here. Pono Loy and Las Benitas are pretty good for that because they're so close to the city. But if you get away from Leon, those beaches tend to skew much more heavily pretty quickly towards expats. There's exceptions. Pochamil, for example, still leans mostly towards Nicaraguans because it's part of the Managua zone. So it really leans towards affluent Managuans who are going to be heading out there for the weekend. Whereas Las Benitas is a little bit more uh, Leonesa who are going out more or less any time because it's so close. So it, it, it's just a different culture. But to be able to do afternoons on the beach and still have real city culture of Nicaragua, Leon is your only reasonable option. So it kind of just rules it out. Here in uh, both Ponaloya and Las Penitas, there is surfing, but really Las Penitas is where you will do your surfing. Ponaloya is much less accessible. Uh, there's also, you know, educational opportunities in the Las Penitas area, such as going to the Juan Venado Island and estuary tours and going to see the wildlife there and how the estuary lives. You can just take private boats out and go and do that stuff. And of course, from here, if you want to see more beaches, Leon is a, one of many decent launching points for a broader area of beaches, probably San Juan del Sur and Riva us are the best for like you want to see 20 different beaches yeah they probably got us there but if you want to see a handful of very different beaches Leon is a pretty good option with its two city beaches and then if you want to go to Corinto it's not that far to see the big port and that's kind of interesting but to the south we have places like uh, Tesoro and uh, Salinas Grandes if you want to see very remote beaches that are salt production area completely different vibe than you're going to find on normal beaches. Go south of that, you've got the famous beach loop with places like Transito, the really famous surfing beach, Valero, which is a brand new, artificially constructed, massive, uh, expat feeling community, but targeted at Nicaraguans, which is super interesting. Ultra modern construction, brand new resort style living for Nicaraguans. Love it. Uh, Porto Sandino uh, and Miramar, which is the, the place where they bring in um, the, it, it's some nice beaches, beautiful areas. It's actually a, a sizable population uh, with a major port that handles the fuel coming in for the country. So the big fuel ships are sitting off at sea. You can go see a bunch of that all within Leon. You're not doing a big drive. You can just take your cars and, and go do an afternoon trip and see all that stuff. So from a beach in the afternoon perspective, absolutely nothing's gonna come close to Leon. And being a little bit on the west side of Leon could lend itself towards an easier time getting out there. Now, access to jungle and volcanoes. We need to be a a little bit clear here. The jungle starts east of Matagalpa. That is many hours away from anything else. So when you're talking about being able to go to the beach in the afternoons, the jungle can never be close. It doesn't matter where you are in the country, the jungle isn't close to the beach. Uh, there's areas where you get a lot of trees and a lot of wild area. It's not really the jungle. The uh, uh, reserve is is far away. It just is. Uh, populated Nicaragua is a, is a pretty big area with a large population um, and the serious jungle is, is quite some distance. So anytime you're gonna go see the jungle, which is probably just gonna be one trip while, during your time here, that's gonna have to be a very special trip unless everything else adjusts to make the jungle accessible, which probably doesn't make sense. That's one spot where Costa Rica is a little bit different, that the jungle is a little bit more mixed into closer to major population areas. So going from places you are likely to be hanging out to the jungle, even though the jungle is much smaller there, it's part of the same jungle, right? Them and, and us and, and Honduras, it's one continuous jungle system uh, with the major Part of it, part of it here in uh, Nicaragua. I almost said portion, then I said part, and it all just kind of blended together. And uh, uh, so Costa Rica has an advantage in how easy it is to get to the jungle and to the beach in, say, the same afternoon. Uh, and, but m many fewer uh, volcanoes, a lot fewer volcano options here in Nicaragua. So. Typically, if this was a discussion at a different time, we would be saying, oh, you got to go check out Messiah. But Messiah is currently closed because it's a little bit dangerous. They had a little bit of a collapse and they need to make sure it's safe. So it's a it's a constantly erupting volcano. It is still erupting um, and it's a it's very safe in the general uh, sense of things. It's is it safe to walk directly up to the edge? No, they feel like it's a little bit too precarious right at the moment. Some things have happened. Don't stand at the edge like an idiot. So they've closed that park. Otherwise, I'd say you got to go check that out. But now you can't. But the area that does have the volcano so you can go do volcano tours. OK, most of Nicaragua actually has this, as does Guatemala and Costa Rica, for example. Nicaragua may have some of the best. Guatemala comes in a pretty probably first, but if not, then it's second. But the two of Nicaragua and Guatemala are the go see the volcano capitals. Uh, but within Nicaragua, your best bet is really Leon. And the reason for this is because there's no volcano super close to the city. Uh, like it is in Chinandega, but the one in Chinandega is active and people really don't climb it. Like we've definitely been here where evacuations had to take place. And we just had an evacuation down on Ometepe 
because Concepcion erupted just last week. Now, everybody's fine, but it, I don't know how much you're going to be able to do on Ometepe. Uh, I have friends who are heading down there any day. We're going to get a report of what things are like on the other island, on the non-Concepcion side. We call it the two islands, but it's one island, but it's two volcanoes and the two circles, and they just kind of conjoined. Very confusing if you haven't seen a map. Anyway, they're going to be on the southeastern island uh, that is not with Concepcion, and we'll get a report of exactly how impacted they are, which could be it's a little bit dusty or a lot of things are closed. We don't know. But I don't know that you want to be climbing like Concepcion right now because it just erupted, so it's in an unstable state. Here in uh, the Leon area, we have the big collection of nearby reasonably dormant volcanoes, meaning that they're either not expected to erupt any day or have gone dormant completely. So you have ones that you're able to do like uh, boarding on, like volcano boarding, where you're surfing down the thing. That's Cerro Negro that's super famous for that. That, of course, is not dormant. That's what makes it good for that. It constantly throws up lava. I mean, like constantly, like, I don't know, every 30 years or something. But it has active enough uh, that you have that pumice to actually slide down. It's made from lava, right? And uh, so that's super popular. So if you have a group from school, you're almost certainly going to want to do that. So that's one piece. And there's nowhere else you're going to do that. You're going to come to Leon from anywhere to do that on, on Cerro Negro. But if you want to do um, volcano climbs and explore the volcano area, then Leon has the most within the region. Now, Granada's got a fantastic one to climb. Ometepe's got a fantastic one to climb. You can climb them in Chinandega. You can... Basically, everywhere has got a volcano. It's Nicaragua. But Leon is known as the volcano destination within the country. So you'll be able to do many volcano activities from here without too much of a problem, especially with a car. Also, the hot springs uh, in San Jacinto, which is part of the volcanic system, which is where there's lava magma directly underground, and it's heating water, and that steam is coming up through and, and boiling the, the uh, mud. That is a really cool afternoon trip that you can do from Leon. It's in the Leon zone. You can go do that. Other outside the city activities beyond, of course, the city you can look up. It's got, you know, the normal things, but we have the biggest museum in Central America. So at least one of your days, you got to take your school trip to the art museum. That's fantastic. We have the uh, Museum of the Revolution. We have the Museum of Myths and Legends. Those, those three are probably the three you want to do in Leon. Then we have uh, there is in Chinadega a museum um, of, of regional Leon history. And you may say, why is the Leon History Museum in Chinadega? Because Chinadega was only recently split off. Its northern Leon was cut off from southern Leon and got named Chinadega. But traditionally, the two together were Leon, which is why Leon sees Chinadega as a satellite community rather than its own thing, even though technically it's its own department. Uh, but Leon is the older one, the bigger one. Um, but they're, they're, that museum is up in Chinadega and is quite nice. Very small but an interesting, like, different look at museums in Nicaragua. The ones here in Leon tend to be quite old. Also in the Leon area is Puerto Mombotumbo, which is the old port of Leon from long ago. And so now it's, it's just a beach. It's a little beach on Lago Managua. Um, it's got a few restaurants. It's more of a point of interest that it used to be something. And on its own, you probably wouldn't go there. Uh, but directly next to it is uh, Leon Vieja. Uh, which is the old city of Leon from uh, before the volcano buried it. So it's like our own Pompeii here in Nicaragua, but it was already vacated before the volcano erupted. So no one died in the eruption, no one that I know of, died in the eruption. It's not like a population was wiped out. They realized that Pompeii was going to happen to them and they got out and everyone was saved, but the city was buried in lava flow and they're digging it out currently. And it's a very important museum in the region and certainly a great afternoon to to go do that then when you're done stop by because it's like on the way out it's like you're you can't miss it Porto Mumbatumbo is right there stop and do dinner there enjoy the beach a little bit and it makes for an awesome outing I have a video from almost exactly a year ago it may actually be a year ago <laughs> within a day or two don't be surprised if you, if you see that pop up in the in the recommendations at the end where uh, we went there and showed it, and it's, it's very cool. It was one of the very first places that I filmed with the 360 camera um, and got some different shots there, uh, So which gives me a little bit of a, in my own mind, how long have I had this equipment? Oh my gosh, I was filming with that a year ago. Wow, that's it's been around. Okay, so, uh, so from that perspective of things to do, Leon is pretty good. Now, of course, if there were different activities you wanted to do, generally, most people lean towards Granada for things to do, and it is fantastic as well. But for the things you're looking at specifically, Leon, is, I think, a slam dunk in every possible way, except for the, the the jungle thing. Now, you said you'll have cars. Great. Leon is kind of isolated, so getting to, like, a lot of those things you want to do, cars are handy, uh, but you can 
pretty much do almost everything by public transportation should you want to. We would need seven apartments or houses for under $1,500 a month. So do that math, that is around $200 ten dollars uh, per unit now you didn't say how big those are going to be but you mentioned apartments so i'm going to assume like you mean like a two-bedroom uh small apartment not something huge uh, uh or it would be you know mentioned differently it's going to be a little bit tough um but but that's definitely within the price range that is feasible here uh to do for each apartment um at 200 you know basically the lowest end reasonably you can get into but these are unfurnished it's going to be 145 um so that's going to be the biggest challenge is that you're going to be looking at uh places that are unfurnished um uh and normally at six months leases so at 200 a month it's going to be really 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 hard i'm not quite sure how you can do that anywhere um for especially for finding seven units nearby that are all going to be furnished enough to be able to use i think you may have to work out a deal with a hostel um where you can get in uh, and take a huge portion of the hostel. Uh, and then you'll have the advantage of being all in one place. So $1,500 for seven places is all but impossible because just that's that's at the low end of, of rentals for standard apartments and houses on long-term rentals that are unfurnished without power, without internet and all that. Now, if you're talking $1,500 per unit, Okay, then, then you're in good shape, right? That should be no problem at all. Uh, you can get into a number of different places for that um, and it won't be too much of a problem, right? Like that, that'll be quite doable. Now the biggest challenge, so, so that's kind of your, if you're thinking 1500 total for seven, I don't know how we're gonna do that. Plausible? Yes. Easy? No, not at all. Um, from a $1,500 per unit, easy from a pricing perspective. Now, finding seven that are somewhat near each other, that will be a challenge. Leon is not the kind of place that has large uh, complexes full of places to rent. So it's gonna be a matter of hunting around the city and putting seven places together. This is where a Granada or a Managua will be easier simply because they are much larger rental markets. Even in both of those, it's gonna be challenging. And in fact, you may find that it's more challenging in Managua, not because there aren't as many places available, but because the city is so large compared to the others that finding seven might be easy, but they could be even physically about the same distance, but very hard to get between them. Whereas in a Leon or Granada, even if you're spread out all over the city, you are relatively close. Like it's easy to get from, say you had one in Guadalupe, one in Fatima, one in Sutiava, one in El Centro, one in Calvario. Well, yeah, if you have a car, they're all just five minutes from each other. So that's relatively close. Uh, but if you're in Managua, and you had ones that are in neighboring barrios are all in the same barrio, you may find that they're more than five minutes between them anyway. And in Leon or Granada, you're gonna find that it's very easy to walk around most of the city. So as long as you're anywhere near something kind of central, then you'll have an option for everybody to walk places. Maybe not walk to each other, but at least I'll walk to the center or walk to Marcadito to do things together. Uh, whereas in Managua, realistically, people aren't gonna walk around. I would. I'm the exception here, not the rule by any measure. So that that could be a significant factor. I had to move the camera because she looked at me like, I'm sitting here all pretty waiting to be on the show. Why is the camera not pointed at me? So I moved the camera. Okay, so th that pretty much covers the items that were mentioned. And of course you're in a big hurry and you wanna make a decision quickly. So I think, I think without, a sh without any doubt, Leon is the city in Nicaragua you need to be looking at. And I think that uh, it's gonna have the one challenge. This is where a Panama and certainly a Guatemala are gonna have a lot more rentals that you can get a lot more easily, but at much higher cost. And I think every other aspect is gonna be less, like your ability to get to volcanoes, your ability to get to surfing, if at all. All those things are gonna be super tough. Adidlan doesn't have those things. Uh, whereas if you are um, in Leon, everything's easy except for finding the apartments. In my opinion, Leon is just a slam dunk here. It's gonna be so perfect for you and your challenge is just finding the right places to live in. So you know your families, I assume, and, and you're gonna to need to be a little bit flexible. That's gonna be the biggest thing. You've got options such as renting a bigger place. You may be able to find a house that's quite large. Um, for example, mine, now mine's a rarity, but we have a nine bedroom. You could potentially have two or three families in something like this and, and just have them spread out in different parts of the house. That's reasonable. Those kinds of options exist. You may be able to find an apartment building. I know of one in San Mateo. It's rented, as far as I know, it's full, but it has four units together. You might be able to find another one like that that is able to rent out the entire place. But in most of those cases, they're unfurnished. There's 
Furnished apartments are very rare. So Airbnb may be your best choice to get started. Um, and, uh, and certainly stay in contact, shoot me an email, and I'm happy to discuss what areas are good, how close things are to each other, uh, what kind of things to, to look for, where to maybe start looking. But it is gonna be a challenge. Like if I had to do this today, I don't know exactly where I'd start, but you know, uh, uh, the sooner you start, um, the sooner you'll have answers, but definitely consider being pretty flexible and saying, okay, uh, I can't necessarily have seven identical apartments that are all just one block from each other, but maybe I can, you know, come up with something by, by look, being creative and, and looking at different types of, of housing, whether it's hostels or hotels, taking long-term rentals, taking multiple apartments together, l one single larger house um, that's gonna handle things. And uh, I have to step away because my dog just hurt her, her paw while being an absolute crazy dog and trying to climb a tree. Okay, she's gonna be okay, but she cut up her paw a bit because she tried climbing a palm tree and she ripped the tree apart and ripped up her paw. But she's okay, just, just getting cut, dumb dog things. All right, so let me know for all of you who have your questions and stuff, get down there in uh, the comment area and leave your comments. Just say hello, if nothing else. But certainly if you have questions, absolutely ask them. I love being able to answer questions on the show. If you have comments or ideas for uh, this, this troop that is coming down and what you think may be good, or if you have any leads on where apartments that would be, I'm sure they need furnished with good internet, like that, that stuff they're going to need to know. Um, and uh, just get down there, let us know. And of course, if you'd like to send in a video question, that would be fantastic. Uh, all the instructions on how to record it, how to send it to me, all in the, the description. And uh, as always, if you'd like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller that comes directly to me and helps make all of this possible. And I really appreciate all the support. I've had a very good couple of weeks. We've seen some very solid uh, growth and, and just engagement on the show. It's been amazing. Some of it negative, but even negative engagement is really positive as long as you have a positive outlook on life. And uh, I do want to say this is super cool for me. I did hop over. Um, I've been testing out vidIQ for those who are wondering, we're turning it down. We gave it an audition. It's an expensive tool for what it does. And we found that while there was a few pieces of it that were interesting and, and kind of worked. Most of it produced gibberish and it just didn't have a lot of value for us. I could see in a year trying it out again and maybe they'll they'll make some advances. But right now it uses like AI technology and it's as dumb as could be. It might as well be a random gibberish generator for what it gives us. So not valuable uh, for this type of show in any way, unfortunately, but it was interesting to take a look. But one of the things I was able to do with it is pump in a bunch of shows that I consider, you know, shows that I really look up to, people, cre content creators that I really respect, not in the Nicaragua space. Those guys, we all know each other. We're tracking each other pretty closely anyway, but in the broader sense and just, just YouTubers that I like on completely unrelated things, um, mostly around like, like uh, editors and people who give recommendations on the software that I do, but people have very popular channels and got to look at their channels and realize that we have caught up. We may not be as big yet, but we're like months away uh, from passing a lot of those channels. And that just blows my mind how much engagement we have on this show. What a wonderful audience we have. And and only two years in, those shows are much older, right? And, and really polished. And uh, it's just been amazing. Uh, the, every, the whole interaction with the audience we have here and, and how interested people are uh, in, in what we're doing. This is just Thank you so much. Again, I know I say this a lot, but thank you to you guys because you make all this possible. And uh, I've, I've been soft invited. It's, it's at arm's length, but on Thursday, which is only two days from when you're watching this, uh, in theory, I've been invited to do a round table. I don't know if it's live. I don't know what the deal is, but a uh, Latin American relocation show has reached out and wants me to do um, a round table discussion, which sounds an awful lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to maybe getting to do that. And I will certainly have shorts that announce whatever's going on for that. And if you watched yesterday's show uh, or one uh, a while ago, or sometimes you see him singing on Tuesdays, Camilo, who was with me on the bus yesterday, he's the one that interviewed me. If you watch the Facebook thing, uh, he actually has a biopic on him on channel four here in Nicaragua, I believe at two o'clock in the afternoon, Saturday. So coming up in a few days, you can see him on television. Um, I don't know how much of it's him on television. It's a show about him on television. So he's got his own his own biography TV show, uh, which we've known is coming out, but we didn't have a schedule and we just found out that it's this weekend. <clears throat> All right, that is that is it for the day. Like, subscribe, tell a friend or family member about the show, take a link of the show and pop it onto your social media feeds, wherever it is that you hang out online. And I will see all of you tomorrow. 
and don't forget your homework, which is look at the four videos that are popping up on the screen and give one of them a click. And if you don't see them, then that's my fault, I'm sorry, but go over onto the right or whatever when the, pop, the, the recommendations pop up from YouTube and click on another one of my shows, maybe Nicaragua 360, maybe this vlog.